Hi, you're in the studios. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm fine, Dr. Andrew Pecora. Thank you for joining us here as I broadcast live from Dallas, Texas, from the Valder BB Show Studios. They told me you would have an opportunity to speak with my audience about bone marrow donations. Yes. Be happy Please to. talk to us. I don't hear a lot of conversations about that. Well, there's a, a group of cancers called blood-derived cancers where bone marrow transplantation is a curative option for those patients who otherwise would not have one. So the ability to do a bone marrow transplant is critical uh, for those individuals, and it's based on whether or not you have a donor. And it turns out that if you're fortunate enough to have a large family, you have about a one in four chance that a brother or sister will match you. But if you don't have a large family or you just don't have those odds that work in your favor, then you can go through the unrelated donor program, the NMDP. And there, your odds range based on your background between 50 and 90 percent. So overall, if you need a bone marrow donor for a curative therapy, it's about a 50-50 chance. And we can do a lot to improve those odds for people by increasing donations. I think if I'm correct, I remember um, Good Morning America host Robin Robbins, yeah, Robin Robinson had that challenge, but she found it within her family. So you go outside of the family if there's no match within the family, obviously, and your chances are pretty, get, uh, uh, pretty uh, at odds after that. What happens when there is no match, or is that just impossible? No, unfortunately, it is possible. And if it's the only, if the only way you can be cured is through a bone marrow transplant, and you can't find a match, uh, that that's that's not good. And that's why the National Marrow Donor Program is continues to run drives to increase the number of potential donors, uh, so that hopefully one day everyone will have a match. Let me ask you. Is the match done by, and I don't know a lot about this, so please forgive me, but I want my audience and I to be educated about this. Is the match done to the type of uh, bone marrow that works for you, or does it have to be done ethnic-specific? How does that work? Yeah, it's actually pretty amazing. So the immune system recognizes your body as belonging to you, and the way it does that, no different than you have an address on your home when you go home at night, Every cell on your body has an address, and that's called the HLA type. And it turns out that people who don't come from the same mom or dad or may not even be related, could be other sides of the world, happen to share the same immune address. And that's sufficient for a match. They don't have to match your blood type. They don't have to match the sex you are. They don't have to match the color of your eyes. They just have to have the same immune address. And if you're fortunate enough to have someone out there that has been generous enough to donate, you can have a bone marrow transplant from them, and your outcome is just as good as if it's a brother or sister. How is the waiting list to get matched up? Is it very short, very long? Well, it depends. Um, it depends on your background. If, you're, if your gene pool is limited, uh, you're more likely to find a match. If, say, your mom was from uh, China and your dad was from India, as an example, uh, the likelihood of finding a match is much less because those gene pools haven't mixed all that much, relatively speaking. So it really depends on your background and the gene pool of your family. In America, looking at us here as Americans and as minorities, say we'll say Hispanic and, and African American, how are we on donating so that we can be matched up to help other people? Yeah, that's a great question. Actually, it could be better. So African Americans, only about 2% of potential people donate. And Hispanic and Latinos, it's a little bit higher. But that's something that people can do for, for, for their background to really help people of their background is get out there and donate. Tell me how we do that, because I see people as designated donors on the back of their driver's license for certain things. How do we do this? Yeah, the simplest thing to do is to go online to bethematch.org. That's bethematch.org. And it will lead you to sites in your community, in your local community, uh, either through a donor drive or just the sites are there. You go in, you, uh, they take a swab with a cotton ball from your mouth, and that determines your immune address, your HLA type, and they'll ask you some background questions. And then your HLA type in your name is put in a data bank. And then every day, 
uh, there are searches. There's about 14,000 searches from around the world per year. And if your HLA type happens to come up as a match, you'll be called back. You'll undergo a physical examination by your doctor, by a doctor, and some blood tests. And if you continue to choose to do it because it's totally voluntary, you can always say, no, I've changed my mind. That's totally fine. If you continue to choose to do it and your doctor determines it's safe for you to go forward, you can be a donor. Thank you so much, Doc. There are so many questions I want to ask you, but I need to ask you a couple more if you have a second. One is, you say you undergo a physical. What about people with these longstanding diseases like diabetes and sickle cell, which nobody ever talks about anymore, but people still have it? Right. Those people with those diseases, are they disqualified or what? Well, diabetes would not necessarily disqualify you from being a donor. Uh, sickle cell disease would disqualify you from being a donor. Sickle cell trait might disqualify you from being a donor because the person who would be receiving your bone marrow would acquire the trait, uh, the disease you couldn't do. Uh, with diabetes, however, or hypertension or other uh, illnesses, chronic illnesses, high cholesterol, prior heart attacks, that doesn't necessarily uh, eliminate you as a donor. As long as you're in good health, as an example, if you have diabetes and your diabetes is controlled, you can be a donor. But the doctor will decide if it's safe for you to go forward. And as long as they decide it's safe, you can go forward. Doctor, I'm going to take this one Facebook question because people listen to me live and they, they tweet and all those other things you know that they do the day. <laughs> yep. This comes from David. David says that he is a gay man, mm -hmm. but he wants to uh, 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 help society. Can he participate in the bone marrow program being a gay man? Great question. No, no, it is a great question. It's not, it's not just uh, if you're a gay person, it's also your past medical history. There is a history uh, to screen for infectious diseases and then people undergo blood testing uh, to see if they might have an infectious disease that would be associated with a lifestyle uh, uh, choice or use of, use of certain uh, uh, substances such as drugs in the past and other things. And that's a screening process that's pretty, pretty rigorous. Um, so I don't think there's any absolute contraindication in regard to that, but there would be a screening process to determine that that individual, and this is done for everyone, it's not, it's not done just for someone of a particular background, to make sure that you're not subjecting the patient to the risk of a virus you may have. Okay, doctor, this has been so interesting. Obviously, there's a need for more donors. Where would my audience go if they've been moved by this conversation or if they've been thinking about doing this? Well, there's nothing more wonderful than doing this because you truly can save a life of someone that you're never going to meet or you may meet, but you can save their life. And you would go to bethematch.org, bethematch.org. That's the website of the National Marrow Donor Program, and you can get all the instructions there of what to do, where to go, and how to do it. Doctor, thank you for that very, very detailed information. You've probably changed some lives. Thank you very much. Thank you.